Good morning guys. Hope everybody's staying safe, being practical, keep themselves arms, out of arms way. Uh, it's Sunday, the 7th of June, 2020. Wow, almost halfway through the year already guys. Right, so yesterday, uh, the 6th, being the Saturday, um, I didn't do any video in at all. Um, and the reason for that was because uh, Andrew, my son-in-law, and Tony, my son, landed up at the allotment again. And we got a lot of work done. Um, and rather than record the videos, I thought we'd get the work done and then we would uh, show you that. Now, it doesn't look like a lot. However, it was a really big, awkward, heavy, cumbersome job. But more importantly, if and when we do get some rain, it's going to make things so much better for catching water. So you may remember over in the uh, over in the chicken pen, uh, just beside the uh, shelter that I built on the front of the shed, uh, just to the side, there was an IBC there. There wasn't in the uh, it wasn't in the framing. There was just one I managed to acquire free of charge, purely and simply because there was no cage with it. Um, and it's been there a number of years. Uh, now, they do swell up um, when they fill with water, but they don't bust. And as I say, it's, it's, it's been practical and served its purposes for a number of years. However, the pallet had rotted, the pallet had collapsed, and basically the IBC was on an angle like that. Instead of being up level, it was down like this. Now, you may remember me saying the one over by the chicken pen has got about 100 litres of water in it. Now, because it was on a tilt like that, at this front end, it did show like it was only 100 litres in the IBC. However, at the back, it was this deep. Purely and simply because of the angle of the IBC he was on. So what I've done, I decided to rig up the little pump um, to the hose that was coming from there that I was watering the garden with out of that IBC. And the water bottles that I've got over there next to the garage... I decided we would pump the water out of the IBC, what was left, thinking it only about 100 litres, into one of the uh, water bottles. Well, it transpired, uh, I filled two and half filled another one. So there was 500 litres of water in that bottle, believe it or not. And then we got to the very bottom where it, it was just crud in the bottom uh, because it hadn't been cleaned out in a number of years. So we decided not to filter that off. Um, and then we let the rest of that just pour out. We disassembled the tap, uh, the tap assembly on the bottom. We rolled it off the pallet, uh, dragged it down to the bottom and let all the crud and crap drain out underneath the fence. Andrew then dragged that over here, uh, round the back of the 24 foot pigeon loft set up the pressure washer because I had a bottle of water around the back of that uh, where the fan tails are. There was a bottle of water there. It stood a while, but it'll do for washing out the IBC. So we hooked up the pressure washer. No, he hooked up the pressure washer. And he, uh, and he pressure washed the entire IBC and got out all the algae and crud and everything that was in there and made it spotless again. It was absolutely brilliant job. He was there nearly an hour just cleaning out the IBC. So great job. Uh, as I say, my son landed up as well. Now, prior to doing the IBC and pressure washing all of that, Andrew had also got up on the roof of the 24-foot pigeon loft. Now, I don't know if you'd noticed in any of the other videos, uh, but I'd said about the seagulls pecking the polythene and the pigeon loft was flooded out once. And me and my son got up in torrential rain so much so it was that bad that our uh, jeans were tucked inside the Wellingtons. Jeans were soaking wet, they'd run down to the Wellingtons, it came up and it was overflowing over the top of our Wellingtons while we were working. That's how bad the rain was at the time we'd done this. So we put the tin sheets on and we didn't have enough tin sheets. So we put a tin sheet, then a PVC plastic sheet, I had to go and buy some, then a tin sheet, then and like we staggered it like that. 
and the original idea was that eventually where we put the PVC sheets I could cut a hole in the roof and make skylights into the pigeon loft but however I've changed my mind around that because it's just opening it up to get them weather again so we decided not anyways what had happened was the tin sheets were longer than the eight foot of the um, sheets plastic sheets that I had quite considerably at that time I didn't have um, the battery app, uh, angle grinder so they were basically put on to waterproof the shade and nothing more than left. So we had tail ends sticking out two foot off the back of the um, 24 foot pigeon loft. A good two foot. Maybe, I would say that, yeah. Um, but the eight foot sheets fitted perfectly onto the back of the shed. So it was like sticking out, then it was right, then it was out, stick out again, and then it was right. So we had a number of tin sheets that were too big which was better too big than too small, that was sticking out, and never, that job never ever got finished off. So Andrew got up on the roof yesterday with the angle grinder, and we and, and he cut the sheets back, the tin sheets back, leaving me just a small two two inch overhang on the back of the shed, right across the entire back of the shed, with all the sheets. And um, that was a cracking job. Then, as I say, my son had landed up by this time, so between the two of them, I'd bought a load of goods, and I don't know if you'd actually seen that laying on the actual landing of the pigeon loft round the front. It had been laying there for months with the intentions, I'm going to get this job done one day. And they duly set to and put up all the guttering, the full length of the 24-foot shed, complete with a downspout, a downpipe, and then the uh, bits of breeze block and whatever that was under the old IBC they were brought over into that pen behind the 24 foot loft along with some sleepers and some big uh, 6 or 7 inch high um, 6 or 7 inch by four, 2 or 3 inch wide timbers anyways long story short we elevated the IBC so that I could get a a bucket underneath or a barrel or whatever um, and they elevated it and then set it all up in place behind the pigeon loft now as I just mentioned earlier these when they fill up thousand litres they swell and bulge at the sides and back and front so then what they've done is they actually built the frame and off the back of the pigeon loft using the, the wall of the back of the pigeon loft as one wall and then they put runners in down either side at each end with bracing wooden strips and then another mesh walling on a frame this side and we squashed the, squashed the barrel back into shape again the best we could and we screwed it all down and it's solid you can't move it so hopefully the next time we get a bit of rain I'm going to catch a lot of water in a short time into that IBC the other option I can do, if I so wish it a later date as well, is simply hook up a horse pipe to the back of that uh, IBC from around the back of the shed instead, instead of me walking round all the time to get water around the back of that IBC. Simply hook up a, a horse pipe, run it underneath the shed, because the shed's elevated that high off the ground, run it under the shed and bring a tap out on the front side of the landing, which I can then just simply turn it up and fill me water bottles from the landing on the opposite side so that's another little job to be done which isn't done yet but the options are there and I can put a double-ended spur tap on so I can take a feed off here under the loft out to the front and then the other one can be left so that if I need to run water off to put water in the baths of the Avery round the back side of that loft I've got another option so yeah brilliant absolutely fantastic job that guys it really is um, I'm still praying for water. Uh, I know you guys have all been flooded out down south and up north and down the east coast, but it's just gone right round the west coast and we've had a little splash. I think I actually, to be truthful, we got a shower one night two days ago and I think we, I think I caught about 20 litres of water in the other IBC that's set up with the black visqueen around it. Now that other IBC that we just put in round the back of the loft needs to... Um, have black visqueen put round it as well to keep the sun off it. It just stops the algae and it wants a little bit of bleach in there before it starts to fill. 
Um, but then that's going to be a cracking job. So we're going to catch nice clean water again, all filtered. We put filters into the actual downspout as well. So when the downspout comes off the uh, guttering, we cut a circular um, filter mesh and fit it in inside of the horse pipe. So at any time I can just lift it up, take the screw out, pull off the end, clean the filter and put it back again to stop any debris getting down into the IBC as well. Uh, it never had any of that last time round. It was literally just a horse pipe in a big gap and all. I bought a new top for it as a screw top as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so absolute cracking job. Not only that, um, there's not much point in me pulling it all out to show you, but basically my son, as I said in a previous video, he's a mechanic. And I had mentioned that I bought some uh, extra high tensile wire. As you know, I used to have to keep getting the car battery for the jump start the uh, right or more because the one inside is goose, then it's, it's rusted in there, I can't get it out. Uh, so I always used to have to use the car battery that I charge up on the solar panel for the jump start it and pull out the uh, jump leads, and it was just an absolute pain it was. So I bought some high tensile copper wiring um, and a 20 amp switch. You may remember I told you in an earlier video that we had, to, we had to frig this lawnmower when I first bought it. Purely and simply because the actual key start wouldn't work. So he took a direct feed to the starter motor. And it basically means shorten out, in, in theory it shorts out two terminals to start the vehicle. And then obviously you separate it again once the engine starts. So what, we, what he's done now is he's rewired the uh, lawnmower. And the big car battery can now sit between my legs on the actual platform of the lawnmower. And he's wired it up to a switch. And you simply just need two crocodile clips onto the battery. Turn the key. Flick the switch. Engine starts. No problem whatsoever. And knock the switch off. That's it. And it starts. Uh, and he, he stopped and started it numerous times yesterday. And it was such a joy to watch in simple process but such a joy to watch no more dragging out great big long leads to jump start it and all the rest of them get having to get off it and wrap up the jump leads and brilliant and then at the end of the day i can simply just lift off the battery off the platform take it back into the shed and pop it back on charge um absolutely brilliant great day's work yesterday guys uh, i myself was just running around getting trying to find the uh, connectors for the drain pipes uh, the bracketing, etc., giving them a general handout. Again, they'd done 90% of the work. I was keeping them plied with cup of, cups of coffee. Um, and yeah, but absolute brilliant day, guys. Uh, I'll give you a quick look at that later on. Uh, but as I said, I didn't video any of it. Uh, it just happens to be that way. This morning I came up, fed the pigeons, fed the uh, chickens. And there was a nice surprise. We got one of the pigeons have actually hatched. You remember me saying in uh, one of the earlier videos, the hen laid that quick, the cock was a bit suspicious, and I thought I might have to throw those eggs away. However, the cock eventually did take, or, uh, take to those eggs and start sitting them. However, only one of them was full, but it hatched, and it's the first one out. So any time now, the other eggs are going to start hatching as well, guys. Uh, one set got broke in a bottom nest, um, and she's laid the first egg again today. Um, I'm not quite sure how they got broke or why they got broke, whether another cockbird had got in the nest and it started fighting and it smashed the eggs or what, I don't know. This does sometimes happen. But they're all settled now and again now. The main breeding pair that I wanted them out of the um, frill stencil birds, the hen hasn't laid. She's going through the motions, keen as mustard, but she's, I don't think she's capable of laying eggs. I really don't. Um, so I was sold a duck with that one, but there we go. At least the cockbird is fertile, and we know it is because it uh, took youngsters off him last year with another bird. So what I might do is um, wait till the all go back down on eggs again, and then I'll take that female away from him, and I'll give him his daughter back, and hopefully um, there won't be too much hassle in the loft, and we'll get some eggs out of him yet. Paid to his daughter, incidentally, so we may, just may, even get a visual out. We'll just have to keep our fingers crossed with that one, guys. Right, bubbled on for a long time now. Uh, 15 minutes almost, apparently. So, um, you're probably fed up with hearing him. But we'll, so what we'll do, we're going to have this cup of coffee, and then we'll give you a quick look around at what we got done yesterday. Catch you later, guys.
Okay guys, so a uh, quick look at the body tunnel. Start off in here. Um, as you can see in here, everything's doing really well. And you can see the other butternut squash now is almost up to the wire as well. Uh, they're really thriving, those plants. However, they don't look like they're going to produce anything. I'm, I'm trying with the idea of pulling them out. Um, I'm going to leave them another week and then we'll see what happens. I actually cut the top off that one last weekend. Uh, the very next day when I said I was, if it got to the wire I was going to cut it off, I did. And it's still growing above. So yeah, and we've got loads and loads and loads of flowers. This one's even put out another branch down on the ground. It started coming out even further now, guys. It's put another big long branch out and more flowers on. And I'm really toying with the idea whether to just leave it and see if we eventually do get something on them. Because the plants are looking really good and thriving. Or whether to pull them out and claim the space back. I really don't know. Um, you'll also notice with these tomato plants, I've took off, I've cut back all the leaves, give them all a haircut uh, midweek. Cut out all the branches that was not necessary, just putting a drain on the plant. Leave the uh, top three or four on the uh, top. And as you can see, we've got tomatoes now on this truss here, on this particular big mama. And the secondary one, you remember, I, I nipped the tip out of this one by accident. And it put out itself another spur, and there's the growing tip on that one coming up with yet two more uh, trusses. So, likewise with these ones, guys. We've cut off all the bottom leaves that are totally not necessary. Want to let air at the plants, and two and more importantly, um, they were just taking goodness from the plant. There's no need for them. Um, so, again, I've cut all the leaf and away around the trusses so the sun can get at them when the tomatoes start to come on. And they're getting quite the size these now, guys. Another thing, the lettuces, as you can see, are doing really well. And I've had two pickings off these lettuces in a week. So I've already taken leaves off all of these lettuces twice. Um, once on Monday evening and again yesterday evening. Um, and they seem to be actually doing better for getting picked. Um, yeah, I did get some insecticide as well, by the way, guys. And some of these plants are making a comeback. However, however, and it is safe to use on vegetables, by the way. Um, I still haven't got rid of them because although the plants are recovering, I have seen signs of them being nibbled again. Um, and likewise, the peppers. Um, but yeah, so all of these lettuces, as I said, they've all been... We've had pickings off these lettuces already and, and, and ready to be picked again today. Uh, quite remarkable. They're actually benefiting from me picking off these... Uh, Lettuces, they're, they're growing back twice as quick and twice as vigorous. Uh, you can see the size of this tomato plant, it's really going for the town, going to town now, guys. Uh, in this side here, last week, we got the uh, frame and taken out of the back here, and we popped some of these little suckers in that I propagated into pots. That's the growing tip that I took off the big mama, and as you can see, it's got its own first truss, and it's really going great guns for it. And you've got another one here, well established to Shirley. Another one here, and they've both got little trusses on them. This one here is still struggling, but I believe it will make it. And then we've got another one there. These ones that I got from Morrison's, the Morrison uh, big beefsteak ones, these were just a massive, massive growth. I had to cut so much foliage off these, it's unbelievable. Uh, but they definitely look better for it, and as you can see, they've taken no harm. Um, the insects have now even moved on to um, the chilies. I'm not sure if you can see, but yeah, there's just the just and so making a start on that. So they needed another spray down these guys. Um, they definitely did subside once I give them a bit of a spray, uh, but now they're starting to come back again. So I obviously haven't got them all. We need to give them another, one. and some are. Faring worse than others, as you can see. A little cucumber at the back still struggling, but it is now putting out fresh growth in the centre of the uh, 
of that. They're really, really struggling that guys, but I'm gonna leave it because it is still going it is still growing. These ones on this side doing uh, uh, a lot better now, even though they got attacked as you can see, but uh, they are making a comeback. And this one down here that got the most attack is actually still growing quite strongly. So that's a bonus. And in here I've sowed another nine cucumbers just on the off chance. So we'll see what happens there guys. Over in the growing area now guys, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this. But something has been digging, and I mean, it must be huge, whatever this is. I really don't know, I still haven't managed to catch the culprit yet. But it's been digging right along this fence. Um, yeah, it's been a real nuisance. I've actually bought an IP camera, and I'm going to set up an IP camera up here. Um, so I can monitor it from the t uh, from my mobile phone from home. Um, that's another little project we're going to show you shortly. Um, quick look around. You can see that these all your cauliflowers, the three that I planted um, last week, have now got established and starting to grow. The onions still doing okay, however one or two of them have threw out scapes now. So I've nipped them out, so I might have to lift those pretty shortly. Potatoes doing okay again. Cats still sitting there doing sod all and not actually deterring anything. Um, the wind we had up here again the other day has destroyed the black currants again. I've given up on these now, guys. Apple trees and everything still uh, doing okay. In here, we've got the uh, carrots certainly picking up a lot now from what they were. I'm not sure how bad this wind's being affected on this camera, guys. Primroses all picking up. Little French dwarf beans coming along nice. Uh, I've got the peas at this end, trying to grab all, one or two have managed to do so, one's fell down there, I'll pop that back up now. There we are, there we go guys, got them all secured now, there we go. Um, quick look at the potatoes, everything doing really well in here, fingers crossed. Uh, potatoes doing really well, as you can see guys. Uh, poor Teresa ended up with blight on hers, not sure why, unless it was slightly over water and due to hot weather. That's usually the cause, but I hope she manages to get a remedy for it. Uh, runner beans, really taking a hold now guys. One plant did die, uh, but yeah, it happens. Turnips, some doing better than others, as you can see. You may remember me planting some uh, dark basil in here the other last weekend. You can see them now, they're actually taking hold. And I put a couple of uh, the spicy, by the way, these uh, mustard and spicy leaves guys are beautiful. I've had to pick off these as well. Absolutely beautiful they are. Uh, radish coming along nice, as you can see. Some will be ready for picking before long. And then we've got the other peas here. Not sure how well you can see these Lola Rossa lettuces coming along and filling out nice now. We'll be able to get our first pick off that sometime this week. And then we've got the little gems doing really, really well. These icebergs, I think they're just lacking in water, these guys. They're uh, all planted exactly the same time as the ones in the polytunnel, but obviously the polytunnel ones are doing better. Uh, but yeah, they're still doing well. Uh, the cabbages. They've all got established, and this is the uh, mustards and uh, spicy leaves. Honest to God, these are beautiful leaves. I've had pickings off these already as well this week. Absolutely beautiful they are, absolutely beautiful. So great. Um, they should start to make a comeback now after the picking. Um, in here, again, the Brussels sprouts, Getting established, slow, slow going at the moment guys, but yeah, cabbage is taking hold, and then we've got the uh, little snow globe turnips that we planted, all doing okay. Oh, I forgot to mention as well, my, my beetroot eventually uh, arrived that I ordered from February, 
so we've got those planted in this little space we had left at the end of here and as you can see they're starting to get established now guys they're looking a little bit sorry for themselves they were only planted midweek and watered in but they are starting to take hold now guys and then we've got the cauliflowers that we got for my father-in-law uh, getting well established now and then we've got some uh, dark basil here as well as you can see these ones are doing really well more uh, radish three rows of radish there and then we've got the uh, spring onions coming through there we go spring onions coming through there guys and carrots that we direct sowed as well very very sparse and sporadic but they are coming through time for them yet guys so that's just a quick update over here in the garden the sap or is doing really really well as you can see that bed's just a flourish of greenery now um, these are the bottles we got uh, filled with filled with water that one there this one here and half full in that one that one's actually full from rain believe it or not and this one's still empty at the moment and you'll notice guys the IBC is gone now this is still a bit of a mess and needs to tidy it up yet um, this is where the old IBC was you alright Paul uh, so this is where the old IBC was uh, we've got the gutter still hanging there we're going to run some water bottles down the length of here and we're going to put a, a new run of water bottles in here this does catch quite a bit of water this uh, this shed here guys um, but yeah you can see the state of the pallet it had been there a number of years it wasn't best when i first used it but it's just disintegrated snapped smashed even the scaffolding boards would give way um, but yeah, so I've still got this area here to tidy up as well guys Clear all the wood up and whatever Ready for burning So I'm now around the back of the uh, fantails loft here with the five five or six white doves in there And I had a water bottle here that was full of water um, This one here isn't even linked up, but this it Completely got that IBC washed out and that's still about half full there guys very uh, efficient is the pressure washer very efficient water wise so we're going to give you a quick look around the back of here now guys so you can have a look so as you can see now up here on the 24 foot pigeon loft we have the new guttering all the sheets that were sticking out have all been cut back flush and we've got the uh, guttering up here now guys and we have the IBC in place now um, as you can see from here we've got the downspout coming down and into the IBC inside the end of there we made a metal gauze filter and that can be removed that little section of pipe can be removed cleaned out then put back again I bought the red top for the IBC off uh, I think it was eBay for about 11 quid or something this this IBC never ever had a top on it but this one is a top with exactly the right size diameter cut out uh, with a, a plug bung in it which you can just remove and it fits the uh, the guttering perfectly so then we've got wooden brace down here as you can see the pallet is elevated on uh, so because because it runs down on a slope we've obviously got it higher at this side and lower at this side so we ended up putting the sleeper in on that side over breeze blocks and you can see that the pallet we've got it on this time is a plastic one it's never going to rot guys same as the other IBC it's on a plastic pallet as well so we've got a sleeper on its end on top of the breeze blocks spread through the full length of the IBC and then we had to sink a couple of breeze blocks on their end in and then put 
These are the timbers I use for propping the uh, polytunnel up in winter when we're getting the gills. I don't know what I'm going to do next time around, but we had to use these. Um, and likewise on this one here as well. So that one's on its end, and then the other one went flat. And then you can see we've got a wooden brace screwed from the back side of here to this frame in here which has got real strong square mesh on that framing. It was just an old frame that was lying around the back of a shed, and I thought, it's doing nothing, we'll use it. So, yeah. Uh, as you can see, I changed the tap on this as well for the quick the quick ones. There's just half a turn, bump, and the water's full there. So, this is all being cleaned out, and it's now squashed back into shape again, guys. So, yeah, cool. Uh, and that's just a look at the framing from this side. As you can see, it's a big mesh framing. Now, I need to get some visqueen over this and down the front and down the side just to protect it from the sun getting in at it. Uh, but yeah, basically that's what it is. The other runner coming down here and again a brace on this side and this thing doesn't move at all. Um, on here you can see I can just lift that out. The actual mesh goes, sits inside here and stops the debris at this point and then the clean water just runs down so yeah um, inside here is the perfect diameter and that just sits in there nicely and clips in nice and tight as you can see guys so yeah absolutely cracking job guys um, and that more or less took a full day believe it or not um, with the two lads but a great job jobbed um, as I keep saying so that's just a quick look around guys at what we've uh, got done where we are one thing and another grass already starting to come back again from this last weekend but yeah right so um, we'll grab another quick cup of coffee and then we'll give you a look around in the pigeon loft guys catch you later ok guys here we are in the uh, other stock loft now and this hen, as I say, she's the one that lost both of her eggs, they got broke. And she's just gone and laid her first egg again today. And they're only sort of playing, they never do sit the first egg fully. They just go on it periodically and then come back off until the second egg, egg's laid and then they start to sit in earnest. So, uh, that's that one. Then in this corner we've got a, a milky blue cock paired to a milky check hen. And they're on two eggs. Um, they were laid latish on. These didn't all lay at the same time in here, guys, so they're going to hatch in different periods. And then we've got the uh, almond cock, which I thought wasn't going to take to those eggs that the brown hen laid. But he decided he would, and as you can see, possibly just under there, you'll see a little youngster. There you go. It's just popped its head out there for you to have a quick look. So we've got one youngster under there. I don't think the other egg's full and I don't think it's going to hatch because it should have been out by today if it was going to. However, um, I don't think it's going to hatch. Then up above that we've got a, a check hen. A little check hen here. And um, as you can see guys, you'll see she'll start to fight me in a minute. There we go, there you go. See, so the birds are pretty tame as you can see. I'll just have a little look underneath her. Yeah, and you can see she's got two eggs as well. And that's her telling me, get off, basically. Some of her, uh, some defend the nest better than others. Then in here we've got the little project almond cock, which is the classic almond colour. This is the colour I want into the race birds. And he's paired to a yellow hen, and you'll see he'll tell me as well to get off in a moment, quite aggressively. Because his eggs are... Uh, are also being sat. We don't want to disturb them too much. I'm just showing you basically how uh, how they will defend the nest, guys. This one here, as you can see, is a bit of a coward. However, I've just looked on here, and one egg appears to be clear, but the other one is showing signs of chipping, so that should be uh, chipped out later today. Um, or certainly by tomorrow. The uh, frill stencils that I really, really, really wanted them off. Unfortunately, nothing. Absolutely nothing. She hasn't learned. So I'm rather disappointed with that, guys. 
Anyway, that's just a quick update in here. Hope you enjoyed that little update and a little look at the youngster. As the hatch out, we'll give you uh, another bit of an update. And just another little look at the youngster here. There we go. It's making itself a little more visible. And you can see the milk in the crop that they're feeding it with. And he's only a last year's uh, pigeon himself. This is his first ever nest. Um, the female has bred before, but the male, this male here, hasn't ever bred before. So uh, that's his first ever nest. This little cock here have had a number of youngsters out of him, but with tumblers. So I'm putting that colour out to the racing pigeons, and he's paired to a solid yellow. All right, guys, just a quick update. Well, as you can see, we've got the uh, white bar cock in here as well, guys, and he's quite an aggressive cock, as you can see. He, uh, he certainly won't let me bother his eggs. Now, I've just had a quick look under there now, though, but it appears there's only one of those full as well. Uh, it's not going too well in the breeding lofts, I'm afraid. Uh, the khaki cock, basically, he has two eggs and the both appear to be full, so that's a good thing. He's paired with an almond hen. Um, yeah. Good lad. Come on, come on, come on. All right, so uh, both of those appear to be full. Off the indigos, only appears to be one of those full. The old man, none of his are full. And for the first time ever, none of these appear to be full either. But we're just letting them sit them out till they get fed up. The ice hen, nothing on there. The brown barless hen, as you can see, she's digging the nest, but not laid anything. The reduced cock, it does appear that um, both of these are full. Um, so hopefully we'll get them out of them. Another uh, one of the birds that I really want them out of. And then I haven't actually checked the uh, qualmond. I'm just about to do that now. Come on, son. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, come on. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Okay, okay. So, uh, let's just have a look at this egg, guys. Yeah, that one's full. I have to put my hand in backwards like that, so make sure it doesn't break the eggs as I'm, as he's clapping me with his wings. This is all perfectly normal behaviour, by the way, with pigeons, guys. Uh, and that one's full as well. So that's a good bonus uh, off the qualman. So both of these are full. Well, come on, son, come on. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, they do protect the, their eggs well. Um, but they're also relatively tame, the birds as well. So we've got two appears to be full, should be hatching shortly off him. Two appears to be full off him. Nothing in that one, nothing in that one. Two blanks in this one. Two blanks off the old fella. Only one off the white bar. Two off the brown and one blank in there. Overall, that's not bad. It could have been much worse. Um, but of course, they then have to hatch as well. There's no guarantees they will hatch, but they should be out some point this week, I think. We'll keep an eye on that as each night we come up. Um, and we'll see what happens. So just another quick update in here, guys. I'll catch you later. Bye. Uh, late this afternoon, and we had Andrew turned up again. This is Andrew, my son-in-law, and he uh, was at a bit of a loss. My daughter, his wife, had uh, gone to do a bit of shopping, I believe, and he decided to come through here, sit in the sun, and uh, more than that, do a bit more work. So it is rather late in the day now, guys, And uh, but what he has done, as you can see over here, he started cutting tin sheets ready to go on top of the pigeon loft that I showed you in an earlier video when I was fixing the uh, polytunnel roof. And basically what it is up on there, the seagulls have pecked holes in that shed again. So Andrew's done some measuring up and he's now got all 90% all 90 90 of the tin sheets cut to length and size, ready to go up there next weekend. Um, so they're all cut and then we can just pass them up, get them screwed in place, and job will be a good job job as I keep saying. So uh, another little bit of an update and another massive, massive, gratefully accepted uh, pair of hands and help off Andrew. Really do appreciate all his help 
and he's just sitting there chilling having a cup of coffee for all his hard work and um, yeah we'll get these last couple of sheets cut and then I'm pretty much going to call it a day for today guys um, and Andrew's kindly offered to come back next weekend and uh, help out yet again um, so yeah just thought I'd give you a bit of an update guys catch you later bye ok guys so it's the uh, final round up um, Andrew's actually left for the day now um, it's actually only 10 to 3 in the afternoon we possibly could have got the sheets on the roof however I didn't want to make a start I wanted to find out we had some snags going down the, the line because the solar panel's got to be taken off the root, roof um, a tin sheet put underneath fixed into place then the solar panel put back on and gently fixed into place on top of the tin sheet with some slightly longer screws so rather than make a start on it hit some snags and then end up running on till six or seven o'clock tonight i decided we'll leave it until next weekend uh, besides anything else i want a nice early finish today myself anyways um, quite a lengthy video mainly me talking drivel as usual but uh, hope you've enjoyed the little update guys um, I'm sitting in the uh, shed again now, I've got the fan on because it's absolutely red hot again now guys. I couldn't do anything else out there if I wanted to anyways. So I'll give you a little bit of an update with the uh, stock loft in the other stock loft there. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed that, seeing the little uh, young pigeon that had hatched out. Um, every night now, after work, I'm going to have to come up here to give them a second feed. So uh, Kenny, my mate, who actually feeds the birds through the week for me, he'll do them in the mornings first thing, as he always does seven o'clock in the morning whatever that he comes up to do his own birds uh, but then in the evenings the chicks need fed a second feed so I'll come up and give the parent birds a second feed which will then feed the chicks on the nest and they will grow rapidly from here on in um, I'm not sure exactly how many of these are going to hatch uh, everything they all went down too quick for my liking this time however I put that down to being the warm weather being separated for so long so some of these eggs might not be full anyways guys um, so we might not get such a good hatch on the first nest round uh, we'll just have to wait and see how it goes um, rather disappointingly I got nothing off the frill stencil uh, hen as I had said earlier even more disappointingly the three major pairs that I really wanted the so the little almond in his uh, the project almond with the yellow end thankfully they're on eggs and things look to be okay in there but the three other pairs that are really 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 wanted the uh, eggs out of um, first of all there was the re reduced hen in the bottom um, both her eggs got broken she's had to go down on a second nest so yeah that's a bit of a setback on that one and then in the other loft we've got uh, the ice hen still hasn't laid an egg not sure why the, the, I've seen the male treating it uh, but she still hasn't laid an egg and then in the next nest to the ace, which is the brown barless hen and the brown uh, and the blue barless cock, she hasn't laid either. They've gone through all the motions, they've gone through all the normal uh, breeding cycle, but they haven't laid an egg. And I'm not quite sure why, guys, but um, there we go. Sod's law, the ones that I want, the main ones that I wanted them off, none of them have laid, or the one that did lay. Um, they got broke on the first time round so it's just one of those things we've got to live with guys and uh, hopefully before the end of the season and I'm finished breeding we will get eggs off those uh, pigeons and get some youngsters out um, and that would be good if we don't well that's sods low as well right guys thanks for watching as always stay safe be practical and keep yourself out of arms way if you aren't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and then hit the little bell icon and that will alert you to every time I put up a new video. So for now and until the next video guys, take care and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching guys, bye.